Hi folks, thanks for joining. This video is uh, called Logistic Regression, Why It Matters and How to Use It. Well, first of all, we need to start with the business need, right? Which is what's the point of this. And I think the, the first statement that needs to be made is, you know, the role of building predictive analytics is becoming much bigger part of delivering successful business outcomes. I don't think anyone would argue with that. The complication um, is that the world, you know, is full of two things either black box statistical packages, and there are many different packages out there, R, Python, and I've got one here that we'll go through, uh, number one. Or number two, very obtuse, impenetrable equations that really can't be operationalized. And in what I'm going to show you with Wikipedia, there are other issues associated with it as well. The solution uh, provided here is a step-by-step -step approach developed in Excel that will hopefully improve your understanding of how reasonable solutions can be provided with basic tools. And more importantly, uh, once you've mastered these basic tools, give you more confidence when using and understanding uh, results provided by advanced solutions. So the first step is the business process and uh, the approach we're gonna use. You can see here, we've got a, um, what's this, a six step process. And we're in, the, we're in this part right here, which is modeling evaluation part. Uh, this is where logistic progression and many other tools, and I don't want to bore people with the detail of that, but there are many, many statistical tools. So the business approach is described above. Six-step process for building the prediction model is, and we'll go through that below. Uh, and then finally, we're going to compare the Excel results uh, that we're going to demo here with, with a statistical package that we've loaded on the machine. You know, the goal of all of this is to uh, predict the probability of admission based on a set of conditions. And in this example, we've got five uh, more or less unique conditions. You can see here, we've got the SAT for math, the SAT for English, SA, the GPA, and the school rank. So those are our five conditions. Uh, there are only two possibilities, either admission or not, one and zero. And, uh, and these coefficients are used to develop the predictor, the first computation that we're going to uh, engineer is called the logit. The, these column values of these of these variables, these independent variables, more or less independent, um, are then multi are multiplied by these coefficient values. And this is the, our first calculation, and it's called the logit. Then we raise uh, e to the power of logit as an exponent. It's pretty, pretty simple. It's a simple exponential. Uh, and then we calculate the probability of getting admitted. So we take so this is step four, where we want to calculate the log likelihood function, and this represents a function of admission success. Step five, oh, before we go too much further, let's go back and review Wikipedia. This is the Wikipedia version of this, and the question I have here is, so what's wrong with this picture? And the first is that it's really hard to operationalize equations of this sort. You know, yeah, you can sort of get the theory as it's presented. It's not presented in a way that allows you to actually do any constructive work. And second, there's actually a miss here on the optimization, and we'll get back to that when we take the next piece of it. So we sum the log likelihood function. Step five is we sum basically these LL attributes. We sum the entire column, and we come up with a value. You know, recall that the logit is currently being estimated, this value right here, and then all of the uh, are being estimated with these placeholder coefficients, okay? And the best estimate of the overall LL function will be a set of coefficients that maximize the sum of these over the entire rows. So when we go back to Wikipedia for a second, this optimization issue is nowhere to be found. So that's the second problem. One is its complexity, and the second is that the optimization piece of it is not here. What we're going to do is we need to enable Solver, but as background, Solver will uh, optimize uh, a problem set up to 200 decision variables, uh, and that's a sum of decision variables and constraints versus our solution, which is pretty simple, right? All we've got are six decision variables. So the row count is really constrained by system memory. So a quick tour of Solver, and we'll, um, i tell you what, why don't we get to this tour of Solver when we actually get to the solution, and then we'll come back and talk our conclusions at the end. So now let's get to our our solution here. So you can see our first calculation is the logit. And if we put our cursor up here, we can see that the SAT math D4 is multiplied by this coefficient here. And E4, 
this coefficient here and all the way down. These coefficient values are sum all the way. The next calculation is we take the logit and we raise it as an exponent. So it's e to the logit. We can see exponent times this value. Pretty simple. Now we do our um, probability computation, which is we're taking j4. We're taking j4 divided by 1 plus j4, which will give you a, a range. Now the range is very narrow here because we have a single value in our constraints. Okay. Final, finally, is we take our uh, log likelihood, our log likelihood computation, and we see here we're taking C4, which is the success or failure rate, times the natural log of K4. So it's the natural log of P sub X. And if we go to our Wikipedia again, we can see where we're taking the natural log of our, of our P sub X. And you can see pieces of what we're doing is uh, described here in the in the Wikipedia. We're so you know I'd say we're sort of on track. Let's go to the final step, step six, which is the solver, right? So we've got solver. Let's enable it. Um, so we want to maximize the log likelihood function, the LL attribute. Uh, so that's you can see here the the range name on that is maximize. Uh, so that's L two, and we're going to be changing what? We're going to be changing P. Let's remove this. We're going to be changing 4 through P9. Okay. We're going to make this nonlinear. Uh, let's open this up a little bit. Um, 10,000. What's that? 100,000 iterations. That'll be good. GRG nonlinear. Okay. And no constraints. And now we hit solve. Okay. So we have a set of values here. Uh, let's just do this because we want to compare them. So we'll just... Uh, now, so what these represent are the optimal set of coefficients that maximize this value. So if I were to pick another number rather than 0, 0, 1, let's take 1, 0, this number goes up. This can be thought of as the optimal set of coefficients that maximize the LL function. Very, very powerful. Let's, uh, let's expand this a little bit here now, and uh, we'll do some follow-on uh, calculations. One of the things that people usually want to know with logistic is, so how good is the model? And here we're going to use a, a, a very easy trick. We're just going to take the P sub X value. Uh, we're going to sort it uh, descending. And we're simply just going to do a simple chart uh, of the cumulative value. of. It. Okay, So we're basically summing all of these things. And we end up with an ROC chart. Now, the ROC chart in the sample that we're going to look at in the package is a little different. But typically, the way that I think about it is these ROC charts uh, should have should be convex, and the more convex, the better. Let's look at our classification model here, which is 72 and 237. Hold those numbers in your mind, and we'll get to that in a second. So we've cobbled something together here in Excel. We've essentially, what, four columns of calculations. We're going to use Solver. How does that compare with a real statistical package? So here's the here's the similar uh, you know data set. We've so let's go add-ins, real stats. Data analysis, we want the regression and we want the binary logistic regression. Okay, and then click OK. So it's going to ask for an input range and we'll give it the input range. Column headers are included. Show summary, we want that. It's raw data. We want solver and a 50% classification, which is what we had before. Number of iteration of Newton's method. And we want this, let's put this in K1. All right, so. Let's compare the ROC charts first. You can see this is fault. These are rates between zero and one. It's a very nice model. Uh, lots of convexity here, picking up sharply in the early, which means we've got a good predictor. Let's compare that to what we had before. You can see this is based on unit count. The convexity isn't as sharp because the because the axis is different. But this is a this is a quick and dirty way to do it without getting too involved. And if you wanted to emulate this, uh, it's it would be a simple computation. Let's go to the here we go. Let's go to the coefficients here, do copy, and go back to our finished model. All right, you can see if I were just going to take this minus this, I end up with very, very small differences. Uh, I could easily attribute that to the, the solver tool that's living in the background. Um, I would put, in terms of coefficients, I'd put more trust in the Excel solver uh, than I would uh, sort of an optimization package living in the background. But I think to all intents and purposes, these things are virtually the same. So what that means is that the, the real stats package 
uh, is generating values that are consistent with what we cobbled together in Excel. Okay, let's take a look at the classification for a second, 72 and 237. Let's just compare them to what we did before, 72 and 237. The, the Excel package, in fact, is doing a very reasonable job mimicking what an advanced uh, statistical package would do. For most people, uh, this is more than sufficient. So that's, uh, let's go back to our start here for a second. Uh, sorry, let's go back to our conclusion now. So I guess the first conclusion is that the logistic regression, unlike the multiple, basically generates probabilities. And we talked about generating an ROC. We talked about the classification matrix. Uh, covariance. So on the covariance side, uh, that's a statistical measure of uh, how different pairs of values function together. And for that, the this is where I think the stat package would be very helpful. What we're able to see is uh, correlations between the pairs. Uh, you know, if you're going to dive into a solution to try and fix something that's going wrong, you basically the covariance matrix is a good place to good place to take a look at as to to where you'd want to get started. This is an example where the stat package would be a little more useful than the than the cobbled together version. We've done a compare with the uh, real stats package. Finally, the the last point I want to leave you with is that. Not all, but most neural net AI solutions use some form of logistic regression and optimization algorithms at the core of their solution. Okay, so think of this as being uh, sort of foundational analysis uh, skills. Okay, and you can see why, you know, the role of predictive analytics is becoming a bigger part of delivering business outcomes. Thanks, everyone. Give me a buzz if uh, any of this is, uh, is too too difficult to understand. Thank you. Bye-bye.